This is a Clark Penrose, and this is uh, Clark's version of a uh, 5F4 Super, the narrow panel tweed version. And overall, it's very well executed. I'll show uh, two places where it varies, three places really where it varies from the original uh, in mostly good ways. Um, but the owner uh, has never really gelled with this amp. He's got this amp. He's got a 57 Bandmaster reissue, uh, which is the same circuit as the, as the same era of uh, Super, just with different speakers. And he's got the 57 Twin reissue, which is an overall similar circuit, uh, the, the input stage is different. Um, quick note, uh, this amp, uh, as Fender built it, had a 12AY7 for V1. This one's got a 12AX across the board. Should have just more gain, which is actually pretty good. The uh, the Tweed Super is a little bit uh, uh, low gain compared to other Tweeds. Uh, that 12AX7 really helps. But the owner says that this amp um, has real harsh overdrive and his others, uh, uh, very similar models, have very creamy overdrive. Uh, we're not going to get to the overdrive just yet because I have found what I think is the problem. Um, he had sent this to two other pre uh, techs previously who both said that uh, th there was nothing wrong with the amp, that it was working just fine. And uh, they were wrong. Plug in this guitar for a second. And uh, I'll let you hear how they were wrong. So I've got going to channel one, I've got the volume up about 10 o'clock. Everything else at noon. Hear that crackle on, on the uh, volume on the guitar? Really bad on that channel. If I go to the next channel. It's not quite as bad, but it's quite noticeable. And what that is is DC voltage on the grid of V1. Now I have changed that tube and no difference. Uh, it made no difference. So let me put the guitar down for a second. So it's not the tube. It is either a faulty 820 ohm resistor on the cathode or leakage, a uh, DC leakage on the board. And I can confirm uh, for everyone, that it is in fact leakage on the board. If I go into on channel two, we've got 68 millivolts there. And on channel one, two hundred fifty nine millivolts. Now the board had a lot more leakage than that. I can measure that same sixty on the board here and 200 on the board right next to this eyelet. It's actually, it's not here, it's over here where these wires are going through the board. These wires pass through underneath. Now, when I first looked at this last night and there was a lot more leakage at that time. It was half a volt here, now it's 300 millivolts. It was almost half a volt here, now it's down to 60. Um, and on the output coupling caps for the for the, each uh, triode, I had a um, uh, hundred millivolts there and one hundred and eighty millivolts there. So what I did last night, just to see if this could be a quick and easy fix, is I removed the solder from this point, this point, this point, and this point. Soaked all that stuff with isopropyl, heated it up with the iron, and drove the isopropyl away from these eyelets. With the, with the heat, then let it dry overnight, and re, uh, re-soldered everything this morning. And uh, here, let me go to the red, black, I'm sorry. On these coupling caps, all that DC leakage is gone, which is good. On this one, it was greatly reduced. And this one reduced a little bit, but not entirely. So what I want to do on this, uh, with the owner's permission to uh, get rid of that DC without uh, reinventing the wheel 
is just remove those wires going to and from the 68K grid stuffers that are on the board. I can leave those resistors in place on the board, just not connected to anything, and install new grid stoppers at the jack input jacks, like on the uh, 60s fenders, and uh, to run wires from there uh, to the grid grids of V1, uh, not going beneath the board, or at least not going. Uh, I, I can do it between the board and the, the backing board and the chassis, uh, which would take away the the what places where DC is getting into the inputs. Um, the reason that's a problem besides this is that when you have positive voltage on the grid, it makes the tube bias incorrectly. Um, people talk about output tubes biasing in terms of cathode bias or fixed bias. Well, preamp tubes and guitar amps are primarily um, cathode biased which means that you want to have a positive voltage on the cathode uh, and you want to have no voltage on the grid. But if, when you have voltage on the grid, it throws the bias of the tube off and that bias affects the sound and behavior of the tube stage. And uh, let's see how much voltage we have on the cathode. 1.3 volts there. And we've got Six hundred six hundred millivolts there. That's enough to throw that bias off. So well at clean stuff. It may sound okay. At higher gain stuff, that misbiased tube is going to be affecting everything. So that may be why this app sounds to the to the owner uh, less pleasant when overdriven. There are some other things that could be. Um, th th this app, like the others, has a cathodine phase inverter, and uh, that can be a little bit harsh sounding. But I need to get rid of that DC before I can do anything about um, testing at high gain. I want to know that the beginning of the amp is, is solid first. This, that sucks. Um, of historical note, the two volume pots and the treble pot in this amp or audio taper CTS. The originals would have had linear taper. I imagine Clark did this for two reasons. Number one, um, this gives a greater range of control because the, uh, the old ones get really loud really fast, which makes some people think that, you know, you have an amp with a linear taper pot that someone thinks it's a much louder amp because you set it to nine o'clock and wow, that's much louder. The entire amp must be louder. You know, it's just a different taper pot. Uh, but also, uh, CTS does not make linear taper one meg pots with solid shafts. So this is a much easier part to get. Some guys uh, like the linear. I, I don't have a problem with the audio on these, uh, though I think that the behavior of the treble pot would be better with a J taper pot than with audio in terms of finding where noon should be. Because due to the nature of this circuit, which is not a great uh, tone stack, and they didn't use it for very long. You lose a lot of gain, and the treble almost acts like a second volume control. So about 130 is kind of the middle ground there. But uh, on these audio taper uh, CTS pots, CTS pots for whatever reason, uh, the last eighth of a turn on the treble, there's no change. So, all right, just cuts off. And then once it cuts off, there's still quite a bit of pot range to go. So turn, 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 turn. And there's no gradual. So, uh, You know, the owner may want me to change these pots out for something that, that has a full range of control, doesn't just stop at some point, and may want the linears, uh, which is how the old ones would have been, though it's really, these, you know, this, you can work around it, you just don't have the same control throughout the entire range of the pot. 
and the audio is actually nicer for most people who want to have a lower volume thing. Because that's really hard to get that clean with a linear. Um, real quick. kind of tearing paper sound in the background at the higher gain stuff on the Zemp. And I suspect that DC there is the cause of that. So at least I've got the DC out of the coupling cups going to the, to the volume pots. The volume pots were also dirty. This one had a lot of uh, noise on it. And the uh, input jacks, uh, the contacts were not great. I had to clean those up. So to the two techs who didn't find anything wrong with this amp. Did you even plug anything into it? It amazes me. Anyway, let me show you uh, some stuff about this amp, just uh, for amp geekery. For those of us who like to look at things like this. While this is not an original, it is built almost the same as an original, and it is using great parts. Um, I'm impressed with this. So the issues that this particular amp uh, has should not be a reflection upon Clark amplification. All right, so we got the entire thing built the way the old ones were. They're using these Jupiters. There's nothing wrong with Jupiter caps. They're extraordinarily expensive. They don't sound any different than, say, a Mallory 150. Uh, people will argue that with that, but, you know, you spend $7 on a cap, you're sure going to hear a difference, aren't you? It's got these uh, 475 volt Sprague atoms. They're okay. Um, it's got a standby implementation, which is like the head on the originals. Uh, amp does not need standby. The 475 volt caps are there. The unloaded B plus is only 450. So the caps aren't stressed. Uh, they've got this, uh, where's my pointer? Film cap to ground off the hot side of the standby switch, just like on the originals. And then they've got a resistor to ground on the, uh, the switched side of the standby. All that does is bleed off voltage from the caps when the amp is powered off. So that's kind of nice. Um, standby is really not needed at all in this, though. It's a very expensive mute switch. Um, if Fender had, instead of putting a little film cap to ground here, just had the reservoir cap always on the hot side of the switch, no matter what was happening, uh, this would not have been necessary. Um, but if you're going to do it wrong, this is the right way to do it wrong. And then, uh, to Clark's credit, they did the uh, AC wiring to modern safety code. So three conductor grounded. The ground goes over to a uh, connector here. The old ground switch is just a dummy switch. The hot goes to the correct side of the fuse holder, then goes to the switch, and then this to one of the uh, lugs on this otherwise unused ground switch, which connects to the primary. And the neutral goes to the other one, which has the other primary. So this is a really good way to uh, use the old vintage layout to have modern safety wiring. So that's really well done. Um, everything in here is very neat. The uh, hand wiring at the tube sockets is great. I'm not a particular fan of tropical fish caps. I find that they don't last a really long time. But um, at least they're just being used for tone circuit stuff and not going to have any impact on the sound. If it begins to fail, uh, nothing will stop working, except yeah, the tone control may sound a little bit wonky. So if you're going to have tropical fish laying around, that's a good place to put them. Uh, other than that, everything in here is as uh, Leo did, um, aside from the pot tapers, as I mentioned. So uh, pending the owner's approval, to redo the input wiring and get rid of that DC, I think this amp's going to sound great. Uh, we'll find out.